Okay. To start with, uh, kasi kailangan kahit sa recorded ay naman dito. Mas maganda sana yung ganun. So, this is the central dogma of molecular biology. Hindi naman siguro mawawala internet natin class, no? Okay. So, we have already talked about nire-recall ko. Okay. So much we have we already have the idea about DNA replication. So, when you talk about protein synthesis, ito yung Galing sa DNA, uh, it will be translated into a messenger RNA and then uh, transcribed into a protein. Basically, sabihin nyo man, ba't kailangan ba natin yan? Oo, kailangan nyo to. Kasi for your course, for example, you are Bachelor of Science in Psychology. Mostly, you are concentrated on the science perspective of psychology. Maganda na may background kayo dito. So, uh, this is a unidirectional flow and a sequence of events represent the central dogma, which is the fundamental law of molecular biology. So, the mechanism whereby inherited information is used to create actual molecules of compounds. So, dito, uh, yung proseso na to, it would be requiring new enzymes and, of course, the production of protein. Pag sinabi natin protein synthesis, by it the word itself, kailangan maintindihan nyo na dito ipapaliwanag kung paano nagkakaroon ng protein yung katawan natin. No? Uh, madalas kong sinasabi na kung ano yung kinakain mong protein, hindi naman yan yung pakikinabangan ng katawan mo. Kung hindi, out of there, that protein that you ate, for example, kumain kayo ng karne, uh, imametabolize ng katawan nyo yan, di ba? So, that is a bigger molecule, at a chunk of food. So, you need to catabolize that. So, papasok yan yung catabolism. So, from a macromolecule, magiging monomer siya. So, amino acids siya. And these amino acids are now the source. Yung panggagalingan ng uh, mga amino acids na kailangan para bumuo ka ng protein na kailangan talaga ng cell mo. Okay, malino ba yun? So, an exception to the RNA dogma is that certain viruses like retroviruses can make DNA from RNA using the enzyme that we call transcriptase. Okay. Now, here you would see the steps of transcription. Pag sinabi natin transcription, uh, it has initiation elongation and termination and when we say translation meron din siyang activation initiation of translation kasi yung isa class ay initiation of transcription elongation and termination so tatandaan niyo to transcription and translation is the two major component of protein synthesis so ang event na to happens in a very specific manner specificity it has genetic codes. So you are familiar with adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, and also uracil. So the base pairs only differ, differs in if it's DNA or RNA. Okay. So di ba nawawala ang thymine sa RNA? So nakikita lang ang thymine sa DNA. So genes direct the synthesis of highly specific proteins that collectively serve as the basis of all biological functions. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Kung ano yung DNA mo sa so katawan mo, yung DNA mo na parte ng nucleus mo, yun din class ang magdidikta dun sa pattern or parang pinakagagayahan ng protein mo. Nakabase sa DNA mo kung anong klase ng uh, RNA ang mapuproduce mo. 
at dito nakabase kung anong klase ng protein ang mapaprocess. So another thing, so obviously it's genetic code, no? So blueprint talaga. Ganun kahalaga yung uh, pagiging stable ng inyong DNA. Now, DNA provides the blueprint. Okay, you know that no two individual uh, where we are talking about humans would have the same DNA except except no if they are cloned. But this is ethically not accepted yet or it, it came to an end before <clears throat> nagkaroon ng cloning sa animals. Ngayon, ginagamit na lang yan class sa mga plants. No? So, walang problema pag plants. Mga, mga, mga kinakain natin. Ang, ang saklap lang kasi parang napuprotektahan tayo sa atin. Okay, you cannot clone a human being but you can clone an any species that a uh, human being benefits from. Okay? So, DNA contains the genetic information that was necessary for the cell to build one important types of molecule. So, we call this now the protein. So, ang namang cellular process may be kailangan ng protein. So, so nagsisenthesize ang protein with a gene, no? What is a gene? It's the functional segment of DNA that provides the genetic code. Kumbaga, yung panggagalingan ng protein synthesis ay sa gene na meron ang DNA. Okay? So, gene expression is transforms in the information coded in a gene to a final gene product. Okay? Ultimately, dictates the structure and function of a cell by determining which proteins are to be synthesized or made. Okay? Intindihin natin to. Ang gene expression... Siya ay naglilipat ng transformation para i-code ang gene sa isang final gene product na nagdidikta doon sa structure at saka sa function ng cell. Paano nila gagawin yun? Parang alamin, determine, no? Kung anong klase ba ng protein ay kailangan i-produce on that time being para sa katawan ng tao or species. Now, when, let's have a review for a gene, no? So, naalala nyo, we have studied cell division, di ba? We have studied uh, two types of cell division. So, basically, you're now familiar for what we call chromosomes. So, chromosomes, as you see now, eh, is made up of chromatin. There were histone protein, okay? And when you talk of a gene, it's a segment. Segment, no? Part na isang DNA structures okay there were pairings there adenine thymine and cytosine guanine okay so a sequence of nucleotides in dna or rna that encodes a protein a segment of dna it's it is made up of triplets or three letters we call this the codon it's a unique sequence providing the code that would build the entire protein so it's made up of many or multiple amino acids for the entire sequence. Okay, so human chromosomes, tayo, yung chromosomes natin, ay merong long strand ng DNA at meron siya, or pwede siyang, at meron siyang 500 million BP with thousands of genes. Okay, next. So here we have the central dogma of molecular biology. There is the two-step process, as I mentioned a while ago. You are converting DNA to RNA, that's transcription, and RNA to protein, that is translation. So on the first step in a gene expression, the synthesis of messenger RNA using the gene of a DNA strand as the template. So yung information that was encoded in the DNA molecule ay kokopyahin at itatranscribe sorry, itatranscribe sa isang messenger RNA molecule. So lahat naging start sa double DNA double helix, mag unwind siya, okay? So galing sa nucleus class, ilalabas yung single stranded na nakapattern dun sa DNA double strand na yun at yun yung lalabas sa cytoplasm at uh, sasama dun sa pupunta sa cytoplasm tapos dun sa protein synthesis which is the ribosomes at doon sila gagawa ng panibagong klase ng protein depending on 
ano yung sinasabi ng cell mo? Ano yung dinidikta? Of course, that's the nucleus. Ano ba yung kailangan kong gawin? Ano bang cell ang kailangan kong i-produce ngayong oras na to? Okay? So, the ribonucleotides assemble along the unwound DNA strand in a complementary sequence. So, maraming klase ng RNAs class. Marami siyang klase. Ang alam lang natin RNA. But there were different types of uh, RNA. There are messenger RNA, transfer RNA, okay, uh, ribosomal RNA. So, uh, these are transcribed by certain types of RNA. Okay, tinatranscribe sila ng type ng RNA polymerase. If you remember, meron ding DNA polymerase, di ba class? So, meron ding RNA polymerase. One, this is for ribosomal RNA formation. Polymerase 2, messenger RNA formation. And polymerase 3, transfer RNA formation. Okay, next you see here the transcription of gene. So kung tatanungin lang kayo ano yung mga part, what were the enzymes that was involved, how does it goes, what direction. Ang masasabi ko lang, it starts with a particular triplet codon or a codon and ends with a stop codon. Or let me say that it starts with a start codon and a stop codon. So, hindi class yan dire-diretsong napuproduce. Pag na-identify na yung start codon, ilang sequence ng amino acids, tapos dumating ang mga stop codon, okay, tapos na yung uh, initiation process. So, nakagawa na ng isang klase ng protein. Kasi pag yan nagdire-diretso, hindi rin ikabubuti ng cell. Okay? So, transcription and translation. This is for bacterial cells. And archaea, no? archaea is an ancient bacteria. Archaea is different from the yuka, no, no, the true bacteria. Kasi we have the true bacteria inside the body. Archaea is an ancient bacteria. Okay, ito yung uh, klase ng bacteria that could survive in extreme environment. So, when you say extreme environment, for example, uh, masyadong mainit, masyadong malamig, mataas ang salt concentration, masaas ang methane, yung sa puso negro natin. So, mayroong mga methanogens dyan. Okay. So, there were examples of bacteria. So, they both occur at a very close interval. Kasi walang nucleus ang bacteria. Unlike the eukaryotic cells, the cells that we have, we have the true nucleus. So, the process of transcription and translation, when bacterial genes are transcribed, their transcript can immediately mabilis ang kanilang translation. Okay? So, mabilis sila. Anong reason kung bakit sila mabilis? Kasi wala silang nucleus. Kasi tayo, class, may proseso pa eh. Kailangan ilabas muna ng DNA, yung single RNA, or yung, sorry, the RNA outside the nucleus. Now, so, in eukaryotic cells, transcription occurs in the nucleus. Okay. While translation occurs in the ribos ribosomes. Transcription means coming from the original DNA strand going to the messenger RNA. So, complementary base pairing, Chargaff's rule, no? Yung tawag doon. A, adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine, okay? While RNA would be replacing uracil in, in place of thymine, so there were also three nitrogenous bases, the one codon and the one amino acid. So the pre-messenger RNA is now processed to splice the introns out. So meron siyang intron tsaka exon. Okay. So with different uh, definition class yung dalawa na yun. And produce the mature, mature mRNA which exit, lalabas siya sa nucleus and then it will be translated to the Chromosome. So, ayan, nakita niyo yung process, no? Conscription, RNA processing. Okay, so tandaan niyo lang, translation, oh, sorry, transcription in a eukaryotic cell happens inside the nucleus where translation happens in the ribosomes of the cell. Now, uh, okay, nakita natin to. So, ang eukaryotic cell ay may dalawang part, okay? Ayan. A structural gene is transcribed into RNA, binubuo sila ng dalawa, exon tsaka intron. Okay. Mayroon din siyang regulatory gene. Okay. Siya yung kumukontrol ng transcription. Hindi siya natatranscribe. 
Pero meron siyang mga control elements na tinatawag nating promoter. So, ito yung core promoter. So, ang promoter ay unique sa bawat gene. So, the core promoter region of the gene. So, sa under the core promoter, meron tayong tinatawag na tata box. Tata box means di kasi doble. Thymine, adenine, thymine, adenine. Okay. So, the two nucleotides of thymine and adenine are repeated many times. So, doon kinuha yung kaya tata box. Si tata box, yun yung nag, nagsasabi where transcription should begin. It lies approximately 25 base pairs upstream. So, there is always a sequence of bases on the DNA strand and this is called the initiation signal. Okay. Now, let's go this. Tingnan lang natin, class. Pag paulit-ulit na yung information, hindi ko na ipapaliwanag. So, again, so, we have the promoter. It's a base pair sequence that specifies saan mag-start ang transcription. So, the terminator is a sequence that specifies kung kailaan naman mag end ang messenger RNA transcript. So, sa tao or other eukaryotes, aside from us, basta may true nucleus siya, RNA polymerase 2 can attach to the promoter only with the help of protein called TFs or transcription factors. Okay, class, intindihin nyo to, ha? Sabi dito, mag-a-attach lang our RNA polymerase 2 dun sa promoter pag tinulungan sila ng protein na mero o na tinatawag nating transcription factors. So, lahat ng RNA polymerases would interact with their promoter region via, okay, through the transcription factor. So, kanya-kanya sila, class, no? So, cleavage stimulation factor, or CSTF, cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor, CPSF. So, when you talk about the initiation of transcription, uh, these are binding proteins that must, kailangan makilala nila yung tata box bago mag-bind ang RNA polymerase 2 to a DNA promoter. So, si polymerase 2 can join an initiation complex to the unphosphorylated form. Ibig sabihin, wala siyang phosphate group class. So, RNA polymerase 2 ay may dalawang klase. Sa C-terminal domain niya, may serine tsaka trionine. It repeats and it can be phosphorylated. Anong ibig sabihin? Pag phosphorylated, pwede siyang dagdagan ng phosphate group. Pag nag-start naman ang polymerase 2 sa initiation, mawawala na naman class yung phosphate group. Okay? So parang ganun nangyayari. Unphosphorylated, phosphorylated. Why? Remember, uh, phosphorylation is a process of adding... Uh, inorganic phosphate and removing inorganic phosphate. Uh, yun lang ang tatandaan nyo. So, once uh, elongation is catalyzed, so pagkatapos ng termination ng transcription, yung dephosphorylated by, it is already dephosphorylated by an enzyme called phosphatase. Or, pag tinanong kayo, anong tawag dun sa enzyme, that is uh, participating on the phosphorylation or removal of the phosphate group. So the answer is enzyme phosphatase. So through this, RNA polymerase 2 is constantly, oh, umiikot lang class, nare-recycle lang. Initiation, elongation, initiation, elongation. Okay. Tingnan natin dito, baka paulit-ulit lang. So ganyan ang ginagawa. Yan. Okay, so ito yung ribosomes natin. Ito yung class O. Okay. So, habang pag nakakagawa na ng amino acid, umaalis na yung uh, pra, pra, parang one amino acid to a next amino acid. Parang dugtong-dugtong na siyang class na gano'n. Okay. So, aalis na siya ulit. Okay. Kailangan pag na-code na yung, kasi codon. Ito class codon to eh. Kanino ba? Codon. Yung iminamatch niya na ganun, we call that the anti-codon. So, sabi dito, the synthesis of an RNA molecule is from 5' to the 3' direction. Okay. Ano nagtatrabaho dito? 
we call this the DNA polymerase. Okay, so transcription now is the elongation of transcription. Okay, so dito RNA and sorry RNA polymerase two adds new pre RNA nucleotides. So pag sinabing growing strand, kasi humahaba ng himahaba yung RNA transcript. So the RNA polymerase babasahin niya yung DNA template one base at a time and builds messenger RNA trans transcript tapos it would elongate now remember the direction which is 5 prime to 3 prime now si RA, RNA transcript bibit bitin niya yung genetic information okay as the non template coding strand of DNA so it contains the base uracil instead of diba pag binit bit niya na aalisin doon si uh, thymine, ang ipapalit ay uracil kasi tandaan nyo, RNA lang ang nagpa-participate sa ganitong klase ng process. So, pag nag, uh, gumalaw na ang RNA polymerase doon sa DNA, it continues to untwist the double helix. Untwist, no? It will now expose the 10 to 20 DNA bases at a time for pairing RNA nucleotides. Now, so the termination of transcription at the end of each gene is what we call a termination sequence. So kung si RNA polymerase 2 ay nakarating na sa dulo, the terminator signal, ibig sabihin nun, tapos na. Okay? It causes the transcript to be released from the RNA polymerase 2, the double helix zips up again. So prevailing models for termination of transcription in eukaryotic cells. So we have what we call allosteric models suggest that RNA polymerase 2 is released following an allosteric change in the elongation complex. We also have a torpedo model. Termination of elongation occurs during the due to the structural change of RNA polymerase unit after binding to or losing some of its dissociated protein. So, anong ginagawa? It will make it detached from the DNA strand after the signal. So, this would happen after the RNA polymerase 2 unit has already transcribed the poly A signal sequence and this already acts as the terminator signal. Okay. So, yan class. Complete transcription. Parang kumukuha ng kopya para magkaroon ng RNA. Okay. Pero tatandaan nyo, siya ay nakapattern sa DNA. Okay. So, messenger in prokaryotes. The sequence of prokaryotic protein coding gene is collinear with translated mRNA, meaning the transcript of a gene is the molecule that is translated into one protein. So, kung ano yung transcript ng gene, no? So, you see here, we have a promoter, we have a terminator, tapos now, it already transcribed. Yung original DNA sequence class, nag-produce siya ng sarili niyang kakopya-kakopya niya lang. Kaya lang yung base pairs nga ng thymine ay nireplace ni uracil. So, ang tawag natin dun ngayon ay messenger RNA na. So, from the DNA going to the messenger RNA, we call that transcription. And then, messenger RNA into a protein, into a polypeptide molecule that is called translation, translated. Okay. Ayan. So, dito sasabihin ko na lang yung mga imahalagang information. So, we have the term here, introns and exon. Okay. Introns is the non-coding. Exon is the coding. Okay. It do not code for protein. Okay. Uh, pero sabi dito, the function is, is still mystery. Tandaan nyo, wala naman tayong parte ng katawan natin na walang function, no? Okay, what else? Hindi naman siya laging non-functional. It doesn't mean na wala siyang, hindi siya nag-code ng protein, ay meron siya ding purpose one is regulatory purposes. Okay? Next. 
Okay, class. Because this is very detailed. Ang ginagamit kasi namin class ay pang biochem. So, doon na lang tayo sa mas madin, madadalian nyo. Ang concern lang naman. Pero sa biochemistry talaga, as in, lahat to ay detalyado. No? Okay, what else? So, I will be showing you a video. Okay, yeah, The exon, the intron. Pag sinabing splicing class, ayun, tinanggal. Okay? Exon is the coding part. And the intron, which is the non-coding part, is removed. Tapos pinagdugtong niya yung exon dito at saka dito. Ang tawag dyan class ay splicing. Okay, now, how can information contained in messenger RNA direct the addition of specific amino acids into protein chains as they are synthesized? So, yung mga information that was encoded in the messenger RNA, ang tawag natin doon ay genetic code. Okay? Tandaan nyo, it is made up of linear series of nucleotides, triplets, or we could call this codon. Okay? Yung, yung, yung nagpa-pair sa codon, ang tawag doon, anti-codon. Okay? So, each triplet or codon is complementary to the information stored. Tandaan nyo, it will always be patterned in the DNA that we have and specifies the sequence of amino acids to a protein molecule. Okay? So, bakit nagkakaroon ng protein? Ano ang mga tumutulong dito? Okay, we have transfer RNA. Kaya nga, transfer. Okay. Where does this occur? In the ribosome. So, nire-recognize ngayon ni transfer RNA yung information which is in now encoded dun sa messenger RNA codon and would carry at tatapatan niya, lalagyan niya ng anticodon, and these are the necessary amino acids for construction of the protein during translation. Yeah. So now, let's recap, no? Uh, synthesis of mRNA strand, transcription, no? Synthesis ng mRNA strand, a gene is copied, transcribed into mRNA molecule, so, MR, mRNA is thus a transcript of the complementary copy of the DNA code. So, RNA transcript is transcribed by what we call RNA polymerase. Tandaan nyo, sa DNA, meron din tayong DNA polymerase. Dito, we have three. So, to initiate transcription, we have an enzyme, RNA polymerase 2, okay, attaches to the promoter. Okay, it cannot recognize a promoter. Kailangan, para ma-recognize niya ang promoter, mayroong tinatawag na transcripto, transcription factor or we call this the PF. So, the elongation of transcription, RNA polymerase 2, would add the free ribonucleotides to a growing strand. Parang dagdag lang ng dagdag class. Okay. Anong direction? 5 prime to 3 prime. And at the end or termination of transcription sa eukaryotic cells, the termination sequence of DNA signals the transcription to stop. So RNA would now signal direct polya, polya denylation and termination. So kung curious kay class, paki-check what they mean by polyadenylation. Okay. So to give you a bigger idea of that. Okay, nanood tayo ng video. So these are the molecule structure. Kaya class, agahan nyo na pag -re review no? because topics are not easy though. Okay. So let me check a YouTube video that I can share to you.
Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about transcription and translation. And in biology, that's how we go from DNA to RNA, and then from RNA to proteins. And so we are made up of proteins. In other words, we eat food, and that food is going to be reassembled to make us. In other words, you are made up of proteins, and those were made up of amino acids. And so just like when you start to cook pizza, and if you want to cook pizza, you're basically going to have to get all the ingredients together and then put those together in the right order to make a pizza, same thing works inside you. The DNA is going to tell your body how to organize the amino acids in, in, into those proteins, and those are eventually going to make you. And so if we talk about that cooking uh, analogy, basically the cookbook, if we're cooking in the kitchen, is going to contain a bunch of recipes to make a number of different foods. The chef is going to pull the right recipe out, or you could copy it down on a little index card, and then you bring it to the kitchen where you take all these ingredients and then you put them together correctly to make pizza. And so if we switch to the next slide, What's been replaced in our kitchen? Well, the cookbook is going to be like the DNA. It sits in the nucleus. It's protected. Uh, the chef has been replaced by a number of different ribosomes. The recipe is now messenger RNA. And if I were to do this accurately, I should have you know hundreds and hundreds of different index cards. Uh, one copy of the DNA in a cell, but hundreds of copies of the messenger RNA. What are the ingredients then? Those are going to be the amino acids. And we're going to put those together in the correct order. And then we're going to make a protein. And that protein makes you. This process that I'm describing is called the central dogma. And the central dogma was developed by this man, Francis Crick. So after Watson and Crick came up with the structure of DNA, he spent years working out how this actually uh, works. And so the process we, he called central dogma. Basically what we do is we take the DNA. DNA is going to have sections of it which are called a gene, and the gene is going to code for a specific protein. And so basically, we'll copy down that gene into messenger RNA, and that, that process is called transcription. Transcription is going to take place in the nucleus, and so all of this up here is going to take place in the nucleus, and this down here is going to take out in the cytoplasm. Uh, and I'm talking about eukaryotic cells like you. So basically, we'll copy down that gene into messenger RNA. We'll manipulate it a little bit. We're going to modify it a little bit. But basically, once we've done that, then that messenger RNA is going to move out through one of these nuclear pores. It'll grab onto a ribosome, and then it's going to make these things, proteins. proteins that process is called translation. And so basically, the way I remember it is script and transcription stands for to write. And so we're writing down the message of the gene into messenger RNA. And so it's a message. And then that messenger RNA is going to go out here. And we're going to have a, a number of um, amino acids that weave together. And then we're eventually going to create something like this, a protein. Now, what does that protein make? That protein makes you. In other words, you're made up of a bunch of different proteins. Where's the recipe book for the proteins inside you? That's going to be in the DNA in the nucleus of every one of your cells. Okay, so let's get to more specifically how that works. If we're talking about uh, eukaryotic cells, remember all of our DNA is going to be contained within a chromosome. And so that chromosome is a bunch of DNA that's wadded up or it's wrapped around histone protein. So if we unwind it, you can see that double helix. But if we really unwind it, what you'll find is there's going to be a message on either side. This enzyme, it's called RNA polymerase, is going to move down that DNA and it's going to copy the information in the DNA. And so if we've got a C here, that's going to be a G here. So we're going to have complementary uh, bonding and we're going to create the transcript. It has the same information as the information that's found in the DNA. And then we're eventually going to lose that RNA. And now the nice thing about DNA is it can uh, zip together because there will be hydrogen bonds between the two sides. And now that gene is protected within the DNA. So if we go through that in the steps of transcription, this would be RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase is going to grab onto the DNA. There's a number of transcription factors that are going to allow that to occur. Here's our gene. Then as the RNA polymerase is going to move down that DNA, you can see that it's creating a copy behind it. And that copy is called messenger RNA. So this is our messenger RNA. And if you look, as RNA polymerase takes off, um, we've left the message behind and the DNA zips back together again. And so we have this initiation, elongation, and then finally termination and the creation of that messenger RNA. Now in us, we're going to do some things to it. Uh, we're actually going to put a 5' prime cap on one side. We're going to put a poly A tail, which is just a bunch of adenines in a row. 
Uh, another thing that we'll do inside us is that we're going to get rid of introns. Introns are sections of that that don't actually code for a gene. So we'll get rid of those and then we'll splice together that messenger RNA. But basically what we have when we're done with transcription is uh, some messenger RNA. Where does that messenger RNA go? It's going to go outside of the nucleus and it's going to go into the cytoplasm. What's going to occur there, that's where we're actually going to take that recipe or we're going to take that message and we're going to make a protein out of it. We're going to build that out of amino acids. Okay, so how does translation work? Let's kind of orient ourselves because this diagram seems crazy. Here's our messenger RNA. So this is going to be our messenger RNA right here. And so it's moving through a ribosome. So a ribosome is where we make uh, proteins. It's going to have two parts to it. It's going to have a small subunit. That's this bottom part. It's going to have a large subunit on the top. And then the messenger RNA is going to flow right through it. Um, every three letters in the messenger RNA is going to code for one amino acid. And the reason why is since we have four letters in DNA, four letters in RNA, A, T, C, and G, or A, U, C, and G, if we're talking about messenger RNA, every three letters are going to code for one specific amino acid. And the reason it's every three letters is it gives us enough variety that we can cover all the amino acids. So speaking of amino acids, where are they? The amino acids are going to be these little balls, and they're on top of another type of RNA that's called transfer RNA. Transfer RNA's job is to transfer amino acids from the cytoplasm to the ribosome so we can attach them on to this growing polypeptide chain which is going to become this protein. And so basically what does a transfer RNA do? Let's just kind of look at one. It's going to grab its amino acid right here and then when it's its turn to go to the ribosome it's going to bond to the ribosome like this and then it's going to drop off its amino acid. And so it's basically dropping off this amino acid. It's then going to flow out into the cytoplasm to grab the next amino acid. Now each tRNA is going to grab a specific amino acid and it's going to have three letters on the bottom of it. We call that the anticodon that's going to bond to the codon that's found in the messenger RNA. And so basically this occurs over and over and over and over again until it gets to a stop sequence on the end and then we're done with that protein. And so I'm going to start this animation over here and so basically let me kind of talk you through it. This down here is going to be the small subunit. This on top is going to be the large subunit. And then we can see that we have all of these, they're blue, these dark blue, are coming in and they're actually bringing their amino acids with them. Now there's an enzyme that attaches that on, but basically these dark blue tRNAs are each dropping off an amino acid and then they're taking off into the cytoplasm to pick up another amino acid. You can see right here that the messenger RNA that came from the nucleus is just feeding through the middle of that ribosome. And it's a site where we can actually have the tRNA come in. Now if we watch this animation here, this is a ribosome that's bound to the endoplasmic reticulum. And so it's going to attach to the endoplasmic reticulum. And that growing protein that was growing inside that large subunit is actually going to grow into the middle of this endoplasmic reticulum. And so we can modify it or do things with it. And so basically this is translation. So translation, if we go back to our analogy again of the cooking, uh, the cooking analogy, Basically, the ribosome serves the purpose of the chef. And so it's taking together all these different ingredients, all these different amino acids, and putting it together to make a protein. So we're translating that message into a functional protein. You can see the protein coming out on this side. Okay, what I'm going to try to do here is actually decode a gene. So we've got gene found within this stretch of DNA. So this is a double helix. So we have complementary strands. And so basically what I'm going to do is the process of transcription. So I'm going to go from DNA, <laughs> DNA to messenger RNA. And then I'm going to try to translate that message and I'm going to go from messenger RNA or through the process of translation I'm going to go to the amino acids found in the protein. Okay, so basically I'm going to play the role in this first line of RNA polymerase. So in the cytoplasm RNA polymerase is going to look what's at the DNA and it's going to put a complementary RNA. So in the DNA A goes to T but when that unwinds the T will actually go to A 
in the messenger RNA. T goes to A, A goes to U. Remember, we only have uracil in messenger RNA. G goes to C, C goes to G. And so if I just keep going, this right here would be an A and a C and a G. And this is going to be a G and an A and a G. And this is going to be a C and an A and an A. And then this is going to be a U and an A and an A. And so every three letters in this messenger RNA is going to be what we call a codon because it codes for a specific amino acid. Now if we want to do the actual translation and figure out what amino acids are created, well I can't do this from memory. I have to use one of these standard genetic code decoders. Some of them will be circular, some of them will be like this, but basically what you do is you look at the codon in the messenger RNA, so AUG, and then I just find that down here. So here's AUG right here, so that's going to be methionine. So methionine is going to be the first amino acid. Now methionine is special because it also also starts all genes. All genes are going to start with methionine. Sometimes we trim that off later, but basically that's going to be our start sequence. Let's go to the next one, ACG. So I find ACG. This is threonine, so that's going to be like this. If we go to the next one, it's GAG. So GAG, that's glutamic acid, so that's going to be GLU. If we go to the next one, it's CAA. So let's find that C. AA, that's glutamine, so that's going to be GLN. And then our last one is going to be UAA, so when I find that, you can see it's right here, UAA, that's going to be a stop sequence. And what does that mean? Well, that's the end of the gene, so that's not going to actually code for an amino acid. It'll actually put in a release factor so the whole thing can break out. And so this is going to be our first amino acid, our second amino acid, our third amino acid, our fourth amino acid. This whole thing then is called a polypeptide. And again, it would fold into a specific protein to do a specific job. Now, most of them are going to be much longer than this, but what I've shown you is how DNA becomes messenger RNA, Amino, uh, amino acids will eventually form proteins, and now that whole thing is eventually going to make you, because you're made up of proteins. And so that's transcription, that's translation, and I hope that's helpful. Okay, class, so... Check na ako ng attendance, no?